off we go to our little shoot today. And uh, today's race shirt is brought to you by Utah Valley Marathon. Let's see the back. Oh yeah. So we got the shoot. Probably head to the grocery store to pick up some stuff. For, oh look, there's a, there's a wasp nest inside of my mirror. How awesome is that? They go climbing inside there. You can't really see the GoPro's too wide, but I forgot to uh, plug in. All right, today's, what we're shooting today, it's coins, quarters and other things. And the difficulties are gonna be how shiny they are, and then also how we're going to uh, suspend them, make it look like they're not being supported by anything, so it make, you know, the high-end look. And so, obviously you can't use some kind of green screen because you have all these green reflections. So we're gonna be manually cutting them out in post, some roto. And so, I'm gonna be shooting it on white, I think was gonna help fix that. So we got some white paper, and we're gonna see what's gonna do with some uh, nice kind of soft sources. Maybe a small hard source to get some shine. We'll see how it goes from there. So tiny, tiny coins. So maybe some macro uh, to show the detail. And um, I'm trying to go back and forth in my head between GH4 and the red. Uh, just for simplicity's sake, I think a GH4 is going to be plenty sharp. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I gotta go dig out those sea sands now. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. We put up our backdrop here. Our little white psych of foreverness. And uh, keeping it simple today, we're using a little bit of window light, but we're also using our flow box as kind of a key Kind of to fill everything in here. This is our fill for each little coin. And um, let's see. And I'm on a macro here. It says no memory card. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, oops. We're focusing in on. Oh, there we go. There we go. Focusing in on the. Oops, I'm clicking the wrong thing. Quarter there. And uh, I'll put the real picture up, but you can see we got a little bit of cool. It's mostly everything's mostly coming from this flow box on my right. And the coin will catch the glisten as it moves across. When you're shooting metal, you don't have too many lights because then you have all this light bouncing around everywhere. And the coin's also getting a lot of illumination from the paper itself. So let me. Uh, I'll switch off our little. This is a uh, a little two two lamp, um, low light, which I got, low eagle back in the day before they were, um, before there was a ton of fluorescent and stuff around. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off that light. You see, as the, if the coin's pointed this direction, it loses a lot of illumination, but as soon as you turn it back towards this light, you'll start catching that cool specular and shine. But, here's our fill back on. So it's filling in kind of the shadows there in our key. Might as well flip that off too and show you. Kind of do the same thing. And the iPhone's not giving you a great representation just because it's uh, trying to do an auto exposure on stuff. Anyway, so I'm keeping it simple, just two lights. Mostly just working on trying to catch the specular off of the coin. Come on, focus. Now, the question was, okay, how do we showcase these coins? Because we have a coin
one for each state, and they have these cool little textures, or the, the, oh, hello. They have the cool design on each coin. And they give us these nice coin gloves to make sure we don't put smudges. That coin is just one in my pocket, so I've been touching it just to get it set up. So these are the shiny ones without any oil on them. It's like, okay. <laughs> and you can see the slider here. How do, how do we get some movement in this thing? Especially in a macro. This is a really crappy slider I just happen to have with me. My other sliders are on a different job right now. Um, because they're, it's a good shot static, but especially nowadays, people want dynamic movement, especially on products. Just have to see what, the, what it's more, more about. We also are not set up, because look at this. You see the base, that little glass thing, the shadow, all sorts of stuff, which kind of detracts from the product. So what do we do? How are we going to make this work? Well, we're going to kind of cheat today. So using the, basically the same setup, uh, I'm going to come back to each, each coin and I'm going to shoot basically a still of each coin straight on. Um, straight on and straight to camera so that I get as much kind of flat uh, information on here as possible. And then kind of been playing with it all morning just to make sure I could do it right. We're going to cheat and bring it into Element 3D and do all of our motion just in pseudo realism. So we could do cut out the background, do whatever we need to do. This is just a mock-up. It's I just grabbed something from a background and stuff. So here's the coin. It's video at one still frame of the video of the coin. This is the same thing but mapped onto a 3D model of the coin. So we can do whatever we want as far as motion goes, because otherwise you're just gonna be, we're gonna spend hours and hours and hours trying to make it look just right, get the focus just right on the macro, make sure the lighting looks good, move it around, etc., etc. And that's just gonna be a headache, especially when you can do it in the computer and get the exact motion that you want. So it's a little bit of a cheat today as far as practical shooting goes, I apologize for all you who aren't 3D types, but you know, this is the kind of stuff you need to do. You gotta get in there and learn some After Effects and some pseudo 3D so you can make stuff like this happen. So, there you go. It's gonna look pretty cool, I think. Uh, again, the thing we have to worry about is making sure when we shoot this that we don't shoot any anything on the coin that's gonna bake in the shadows. Because if we shoot the coin, if I shoot this, this coin for 3D, and I shoot it with this nice highlight like this, it's gonna have this highlight always on the 3D coin. So I need to shoot it as flat as possible so that when I stick in the computer, the computer can then do all the highlights and, and movement and, and you'll see from the 3D lights that happening instead of having it being baked in. The other thing I'm gonna do is try and get a little bit, oh, my computer, my phone, uh, it's gonna sleep. Trying to get a little bit of angled light for shadows so I can see some of the depth on the coin so I can do a bump map so that the, the After Effects, you can, I can get away probably without a bump map because it's got some nice you know definition to it, but I want to try and uh, take that same picture and make a bump map out of it so like the, the 3D program will then add some depth to the model instead of just having to be a flat picture mapped onto a disc. So there we go, save some headache for today as far as trying to make each coin look picture perfect for for uh, the setup. And the other thing too is having each coin match because if I'm doing 50 states, I want to try and match consistency when I do um, the different coins so that I can bring them in if I want to bring them in as like a set. Now we do have to shoot some of the setup today normal because we do have these sets that we have to lay out in the books and show the books and stuff. So anyway, off I go to do some shooting stuff. Okay guys, so here we are, we're putting these quarters up one at a time as quickly as possible to our little, our little stand here. Now the interesting thing is, I'm doing a couple options because I want to have, be able to kind of pick in post. So right now if I, I'm getting a reflection of the camera mostly in the quarter. And again, if I want to try and control that, what reflecting I'm going to have in the computer, I'm doing two options. I'm putting my white glove up to 
So the coin has a white reflection. So that it's more of a neutral reflection than it is the silver, which is kind of more dictated by the environment. So just so I have options later on. I just thought it was interesting. You know, you forget how much the environment affects your subject when you're working with metals. And also you can see this one's, you probably can't see it actually. So when it's tilted down, it's reflecting the paper, which also gets the same effect, which potentially could be a problem if depending on my focal plane, but I'm stopped down to a five. So I should have some leeway if it tilts back and forth. I mean, even though we're zoomed all the way in, or zoomed, yeah, our focal length is a 35, which isn't super tight, you know, according to focal lengths. We are on a micro four thirds lens, so that's acting more like a 50, 60, or a 70, I mean, so anyway. Just something interesting. Okay, we're done with our coins, or our individual quarters. I also took some texture shots of our case, our booklet. So we can make this guy in 3D if, it, if, it, if we needed to. Um, and now just doing the kind of product shots. We'll get the slider. Where does the slider go? Somewhere in here. We'll get the slider up here and do a couple of nice little moves it's punching in some tight shots of our collector's book and everything will be good and it's friday it's always been friday but today or right now it's officially the weekend finished up the shoot i'm gonna head over to the walmart or somewhere like that and get a new kiddie pool because it's so hot outside we got friends going over to do some barbecue and so I go home make some patties, get the kiddie pool set up, get the backyard sprinkler set up for our neighbors to come over, our friends. It's going to be awesome. And uh, yeah, it's hot. It's hot here. Cold. I was like, there's like, yeah, he's seen the, like the knockout. 